Did you guys watch our Raw? I did. I watched most of it, yeah. So it starts off with the, in the back where uh, the DX guys are all doing comedy stuff and they're saying cuss words and they're bleeping around and everything. So they're just like, you know, this, this is actually pretty funny, I thought. Um, it, I mean, I could tell you the jokes, but just, you just kind, kind of got to see it. It's just they were uh, – it was funny. I, that, I actually laughed. Um, oh, uh, the guess, DX stuff? Yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was funny with the – and yeah, all that right, usual right. stuff. They had words and right. you know, Hunter is now trying to be serious and they're still playing around. Right. You know? And um, they didn't overdo it. I like that they didn't try to act like cool teenagers. They were like, you know, we're just older cats still having fun. Right. So next was uh the bloodline comes out, the whole bloodline, and Rain spoke about how he likes to move forward, but he can't get past Friday. He said his father uh taught him a long time ago the loudest in the room is also the weakest in the room. And Rain said if you're the weakest in the room, you're part of the bloodline that makes you a fool. So he looks at Jay and asks Jay if he's a fool. Then Zane interrupts. Every time Sammy interrupts, he gets a good pop. Huge crowd. pop. Heyman scolded Zane, but Reigns held his finger up and Heyman apologized. Zane recalled Reigns telling him that Jay was now his problem. And Zane said that as an honorary ooze, he would love the opportunity to handle the situation. Reigns looked upset and smiled and said, Sammy really is the honorary ooze. He's all yours. Go ahead, Reigns said. And the Sammy champ broke out. Zane approached Zane and said, we all love you very much. And Zane said he and Reigns were spitballing the other night about the future of the bloodline. And Zane said there was a lot of personal stuff, and he feels like he and Reigns connected. Reigns grinned. Zane told Jay that his behavior of late hasn't been very oozy. Uh, Zane pointed to Jimmy and asked who doesn't love him. Zane raved about Jimmy's smile, and Zane praised Sako as being serious and also pretty cool. Zane told Jay that he needed him to be cool and asked if he thought he, that he could be. Jay looked to Reigns, who told him not to look at him. And Jay asked Reigns if this was a joke. Jay protested, and Sammy cut him off. And Matt Riddle's interest music interrupted. And Riddle walked on the stage and recalled beating Seth Rollins in the fight pit. And Riddle said, Reigns beat him before, and he knows they have a stipulation that prevents him from challenging Reigns for the championship. And says, but come on, the people want the match. Reigns asked the Brooklyn crowd they should give Riddle one more chance. Nah, Reigns said before adding that a deal is a deal. And Riddle said if Reigns won't step up the plate, then maybe one of his bloodline bros would. Uh, Jay, Jay told Zane that he should step up, and Riddle used the word yeet. Zane said only blood members can use that word. And Riddle said again. And Zane eventually got flustered and challenged him to a one-on-one -on -one match, which, which Riddle accepted. I didn't... I think when, Ray, when Riddle came out, the segment kind of went downhill a little bit. It did. You know, I didn't, and, I didn't like this. And it did, honest. right. But it was and, good before that until he came out. Right. And plus, they have the bad habit of they'll take a word like shush or ye right. and just drive it into the ground or yeah. the, with Miz with the. It's like, come on, we don't need, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I thought the int, first of all, like I said before, look at the way Roman. And the Usos and Sammy and Paul come out, how they take their time walking to the ring, you know, being stars, soaking it all in, being arrogant, standing in the ring before they talk, you know, all those little things, bro. They don't rush it. And it, they just come off as stars. They look cool as When these guys turn babyface, it's going to be ridiculous, the merch they're going to sell, because people half, half ass want them to be babyfaces now. Um, and... Uh, but, you know, this was really all Sammy, Roman, and Jay. They were great here, you know, and I thought Riddle added absolutely nothing to this. Uh, I didn't get this on Hulu. Johnny Gargano beat Austin Theory in 8 minutes and 50 seconds. Any comment on this? I didn't get to see it. Okay, I saw this match, and the only thing I could think is when you look at this match visually, if you didn't know who Johnny Gargano is, the first thing you'd think is, why is this little guy putting over this guy that looks so much bigger and stronger than him? Because he looks really small next to theory. The other thing, my theory on theory is, I don't know if Hunter doesn't see the same thing as Vince. Because, bro, he's taking a lot of losses. And this was a clean loss. Now, I talk about distractions and interferences, which they do too much. But this was a clean loss, you know, to Gargano. So I don't know if they're going to... Oh cash in that money in the bank and then he gets all his heat back and in the meantime he's going to keep doing jobs but it just seems that's all he's been doing yeah he's lost like uh, i've read on online he's trending on twitter he's lost 15 matches in a row wow uh, but i will say this okay and it's not I, it's not that i don't think hunter doesn't like him do you remember they did the exact when we were watching the show back in nxt they did the similar thing with him to doing the losing streak back in nxt could be too, you know. You know I and think that was Hunter's. Hunter's and Hunter was running the show there, so I, I know he doesn't. I, I know be. Hunter's right. Hunter would not be using the guy if he didn't think there was any value. Right. Like I think Hunter's smart enough to knows like, 
Well, I'm just I'm going to put a guy on TV and just beat him. Just week. it's gotta, just know, very fight. unusual because he has it taken is. a lot of lot. Of, you know, he's always taking the big bump. He's always getting beat. Right. You know, now he's getting beat clean. Yeah, so. he's not really getting his heat back, which right. is weird. Okay. Uh, so then we go to a uh, Mysterio versus Chad Gable. This is a good match. Um, Dom and Ripley were ringside coming out of the break, and Otis tried to get involved, but Ray was able to shove him into the ring post. And uh, Ray hit the 619, followed up with the, uh, the dive over the top rope into a splash, just let him get in three. It's a good finish because he did a springboard splash on him, but that, that looked good. So after the match, Dom entered the ring and motioned for his father to bring it. Ray turned to leave, but Ripley was blocking his path. Then Dom shoved his dad and lightly slapped his face before telling, telling him he has lightly, to kill him. Lightly, he slapped the shit out of him. Yeah, Dom slapped his father once. It was, and then he, he, you know, he kind of like pie faced him, and then he slapped him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Dom slapped, slapped his father, and once he, he slapped him this time, and once again demanded that he hit him. Ray ran the ropes and ran past Dom and took out Priest, who was on the apron, and Finn Balor ran out, and Ray performed a head scissors takedown, sent Bal- Balor crashing into Dom. <clears throat> then Ray put Balor in position for 619, but Dom clotheslined Ray as he's running the ropes, and Dom stood over Ray and said, Hit me a couple times. The crowd was chanting, You suck. It was getting good heat here. And Dom waited for his father to get up and told him to repeatedly to hit him. Ray looked emotional, shook his head no, and it, as he left the ring, uh, uh, Dom hit Ray from behind, and Ripley held Ray in position, then Dom performed a 619 on him. Um, yeah, the, 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 Dom is, the, the, Dom's got more heat than anybody right now. You know, the, the, the post-match was good stuff, I thought, and the yeah. match was decent. The so. first thing I want to say is I say this a lot, but it's worth mentioning. Chad Gable, very, very underrated worker. What a great, great, great smooth worker. And, bro, not because he's our boy, but at 45 years old or 47 or however old Ray is now with more than 15 knee operations and all the bumps he's taken, the guy's a freak of nature, bro. He wrestles like he hasn't missed a beat, you know. He's not as wild as he used to be, but he still does a lot of cool shit. And, like, for example, that baseball slide he does to the outside and then he takes mm-hmm. the guy in a sunset flip into the power bump. Yeah, that looks really nice, you know. Yeah. Ray's just, like, ageless in the ring and the storytelling here was great you know people are into it and it's like how dare you hit your father you know he spoiled you and he raised you and he's a good dad because you know raise a good guy people can tell and now you're slapping him you piece bro when ray finally gets his hands on dominic that place is gonna come unglued Mm -hmm. that's what i said but me and vince were were, had a good discussion about this because he's he wasn't he's not happy not not only he's the word happy but he's not a like thrilled with the way Ray has been acting. Is he ever like happy? he's? Well, no, I'm just Vince, saying. Like, is there like, anything he, Vince likes in WWE? Oh no, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there's some stuff, but like, the, like? this one, uh, just you know, like uh, he likes um, the bloodline stuff and everything. You know, let me ask Maybe, you a question. Well, let me finish telling you that this is okay. take here. Okay, uh, so he was saying that um, that he's not he, he wouldn't book Ray this way. Like he thinks Ray should be more like tough love, be a little more like you know, like saying and I said like you know, kind of like with the 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 you know, the Gen X is against the Gen Zers, right? <clears throat> you know, but I, I said, I go, you can't really knock them the way they're booking Ray because, like, if, the, you know, this is building up to a huge pop when Ray finally punches him in the face. Yeah, it definitely. And is. if they go, if you get the big pop, like you think you're going to get, it's like you can't really knock the way they're, they're leading up to right. that. You know, so, so, so you could do a million ways to get to it. Uh, there are, they are going to get to that, and it is going to be a huge pop because Dom is getting huge heat. So, so I would agree that they have been booking. Ray, the right, like I said, I wouldn't have done it this way, but I can't knock the way they're doing it, you know. I have, like, right, and right. you know, Scott Hall used to have this great saying, and he was right, there's more than one right way, and he's right, right. right. But, yeah. uh, let me ask you a question you were gifted something in Vegas, and it was supposed to be behind you, and I have yet to see oh, it. Oh, it's in the car, the, the, oh. the, the Lily. I'll bring that in next week, yeah. I'll debut you know- it next week to gift. <laughs> You know, okay. now yeah. I can't wait for that. Uh, I was All gonna right. say, you know, it, I, I think what, what'll happen is it's October, so it's only a few months till the Rumble. So you get Dom out there in the Rumble, the ring clears or whatever, and then boom, Ray's music hits. Leave those two alone. Ray comes out and whip on the ring, kind of thing. You know, had that be the first time that they touch, or that he right. touches him. The, yeah. So on the show, the Judgment Day stays in the ring. And oh wait, and I forgot to say because this will make this will make Conan happy. Speaking of uh, Vince Russo. I actually did castrate the marks last night too, so that'll. I don't know when they put that out, but that'll probably be out very soon. Why what did you? What was the segment you, that you did? Why would Why would they put you on that show? Number one, number two. How boring were you from zero to ten? Like a six. Wait. So what is? So wait. Wait. I, I, I dropped off there. What, what did What did you do? I did castrating the marks with uh, Vince and Jeff. Last I've never. Heard what you did the whole show? I did, did the whole show. I did the. Yeah, I did the whole show actually. 
they're at, Conan, the show is actually pretty funny because right. he gets like actual quotes from the dirt cheat guys and stuff and thing and like gets them on the, the thing and they make fun of some of the stuff they say. You know how like we used to make fun of Wade Keller's interviews? Right. Like yeah. they, they do stuff like that. They like, you know, but, but yeah. it's like a whole show of stuff like that. This so. one was a lot about. Uh, Tony Khan on Ariel Hawane. There was like four clips from that submitted. There was a few other ones, Meltzer tweets. Right. Uh, right. All right. So next, is, uh, so next, is the bloodline stays in the ring. They're kind of promo on edge. Um, uh, so Dom bloodline. said, watching Ripley smash Phoenix with the concerto uh, did it for me, and I knew that it was. I knew that I did it. Um, well, he said, watching Ripley smash Beth Phoenix with the concerto did it for me, and I know I did it for all of you as well. Dom said his favorite part of the 619 and his father was seeing the pathetic and devastated look on his face. Dom said Ray deserves to feel as useless and helpless as Ray made him feel throughout his entire life. Then Balor brought up AJ Styles in the ultimatum, and AJ made his entrance. Styles said he wasn't there to argue with Balor. Styles told Balor he was right. Styles said everything he's ever needed was standing right in front of him, and he said that with his back against the wall, he realized he needed help. He said there comes a time when a man needs friends, and Styles said he needed family. So Styles dropped to one knee and bowed in front of Balor. That got good heat from the crowd who held out his hand and helped him Styles to his feet. <clears throat> Styles and Balor hugged. Balor said he was proud of Styles and knew that he would come around. But Styles said he held onto the hug while saying he wasn't talking about Balor. Then Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson make their entrance and Joel Styles in the ring. Crowd, crowd got really into this. Then they started fighting. Uh, and Styles followed speared Balor over the broadcast table. Gallows slammed a chair over the back of Priest. Gallows and threw an uppercut at Priest who sold him at falling over the ringside barrier and Ripley pulled Dom over the barricade and ran away with him. And Balor was left alone with Styles, Gallows, and Anderson at ringside and Balor ran into the ring and ran out the other side and met up with the other Judgment Day players with, near the stage while Styles, Gallows, and Anderson did the two sweet hand sign in the ring together. This got a good reaction from the crowd. I think they were surprised at this too. Yeah, this was, this was good, but it got even better once the OC showed up. They got a big pop and then when they started to brawl with Judgment Day, who everybody hates... People really liked it, and uh, they'll have some great matches together. Um, okay, so then they go to footage of earlier in the night of Brian Saxton, Byron Saxton interviewing New Damage Control in a bar. Uh, Saxton asked Bailey for loss to Bianca was a setback to the faction's plans to take control of the women's division. Kyle spoke up and said she was. At, Kai spoke up and said she was at rock bottom when Bailey was the only person to reach out and offer a helping hand. Kai said she would do anything for Bailey or Sky, and then asked if you could say the same about Belair, Asuka, Asuka, and Alexa Bliss. Kai said they will punish Belair when Bailey gets a rematch until Bailey is holding the gold she deserves. Then Kai spoke in Japanese, and Bailey translated by saying that Sky said she would kick Candice LeRae's and the match was listed as coming up after a break. Um, Bro, I'm sorry, but like I've said this before, they yeah. invest a lot of time in these girls, and Dakota has zero personality she's got that mike pence melania trump personality which is absolutely none she's definitely when she talks bro to me she's crickets inside of tumbleweeds i mean just there's nothing there and these two girls have dragged bailey down you know this was yeah, uh, not- bro they did nothing to make me want to see them right um, so next is a uh, roman is shown with a uh, solo and paul Heyman in the parking garage and jay uso showed up that's where Reigns was going, and Reigns said Heyman had them set up in Manhattan they would be doing New York. Reigns told Jay he had to stay behind with Sammy, and Reigns told Jay to make sure that my honorary Us wins tonight. And Jay wanted Sokoa to come with him, but Reigns said that Sokoa would be going with him, and Reigns, Sokoa, and Heyman entered the SUV. And this then they was left. great. This yeah, was just was great because Jay's pissed off now. Now yeah. he's really pissed off. He's, and the funniest thing about this is so simple storytelling. It's kind of over the top, but he always has the tough scowl on his face right and like he's just <laughs> like the whole time like he's just completely aggravated with everything yeah. and everybody else is everybody else is smart you know jimmy's always smiling and everybody has got the mean face solo's right. just expressionless you know stuff like right. yeah right yeah exactly so um so candace LeRae beats bailey hmm. uh well what you call it? but this, so, so that was weird why so yeah well being okay so LeRae headed to the stage area and dakota sky they ran out attacked her and brought her back to the ring. And then Bianca ran out and was quickly outnumbered by the heels. But Bailey hit LeRae with a running knee to the head. And Bailey had her sidekicks hold up Belair when she pulled an elbow drop in the middle rope. I guess, oh, but you know what? Maybe this was like a, a way for them, the, having Candace go over was a way for them to get set up heat on Bianca, I imagine. Because that, that, that's how the segment ended. The, the heels ended with their heat. So, but I'm not, you know, who, who cares? I, the, all this stuff I don't care about at all. Yeah, all bro, right. she's just right. not over with the people. She's not resonating yet. This Candice LeRae girl, she should not be beating Bailey. Bailey's a star. She just did the a job, you know, in the extreme rules. And um, 
I just don't see Candace being the star that Bailey is. That right. could be wrong, but I just don't. Okay, so this did not. This is a very long segment. Okay, <clears throat> well, it's long to read. I'm not sure how long it was on TV because it did not make it to Hulu. Okay, the Miz was shown walking backstage where a crew member had a QR code on the back of a sweatshirt. Marie showed up. Miz said he thought this was a bad idea. She said he worked hard to make sure the lunatic wouldn't ruin his birthday party. And Marie's, Marie's presented Miz with a baseball bat as a gift. Patrick said Mrs. Mrs. Birthday Celebration would be up next on Raw. So Marie stood in the ring and had two tables filled with gifts and cake, and they had balloons attached to the ring post. So she introduces Miz, um, uh, who made his entrance with his baseball bat. Miz said Marie knows how to make him feel special. Marie said she spent so much money. She told Miz to read the baseball bat. Miz said it was signed by the best slugger in the game, Jose Ramirez of the Cleveland Guardians. Miz turned into a New York crowd for thinking he was going to say the bat was autographed by Aaron Judge. Uh, maybe Maurice presented Miz with two giant balls with Miz's, Miz's image on them. Get it? That's like the, jo- the joke. Right. Miz struggled to pull a gift off the table. Once he did, Dexter Loomis's head was underneath it. Miz tried to play whack a mole with a bat, but Loomis disappeared, and Loomis entered the ring behind Miz and put him in the submission hold. Miz has flailed his legs... While in the hold and sent Maurice toward the cake, but she tripped and came up short. They did it again, and she awkwardly fell onto the cake, and Miz escaped and ran out of the ring down to the backstage area. And Maurice stood up and had cake on her face and spotted Lewis, who just looked at her. Maurice, sh- Maurice shrieked and then ran away, and Lewis grabbed the cake knife and stabbed the Miz balls. Lewis looked at the cake. I uh, eat the cake chant broke out, and Lewis cut a piece and took a bite of the cake. What did you think of this? I didn't see this because I was going to get to Hulu. Okay. But this sounds absurd. <clears throat> so <laughs> last week when I heard that Miz was having a birthday celebration, I knew this guy was going to go in there and break it up. Right. I'm a big fan of the Miz. Of course, Maurice is hot. I've never, ever, ever really found her entertaining whatsoever. And she was not entertaining here. I think she's kind of boring to tell you the truth. I thought this was a complete waste of time. It was not that good. It was way too long. And this is to me like a storyline that I loved at the beginning. And I was like, I couldn't wait to see what happened next to like, dude, you milked this way too long. And this is what you got, you know? Um, And bro, that looked amateurish. They did this thing where I think Miz bumped into Maurice and she was supposed to fall face first into the cake, missed it completely. So then she tried to put the cake on her face and the camera pulled away so you couldn't see it. It looked so amateurish. I would have just had Dexter Loomis pick up the cake and buy pie paste her with it. I would but, be willing to bet this. I would bet money that the, that the whoever the writers that were writing the 24-7 stuff are writing this stuff too. This was not good, dude. And it did not. The only good thing about this is that next week they're finally going to wrestle. But we still don't know why he's stalking him. We still don't know why he's afraid of him. We still don't know what he did to him. Like, we still don't know none of this stuff, you know? Well, and was- and the matches, actually, if you remember, the stipulation is, like, I think if one of them loses, they have to leave the promotion or something like that. What was the stipulation? Oh, no. Yeah, there's some sort of stipulation, if I remember correctly. Uh, okay, let me give you does the house it say, does it say in the Does it no. say it in the thing you just read? No. The, the, let me read this. Powell's POV. The birthday party segment was lousy. What started out as fun is now just a repetitive weekly gag involving him and Lewis, and the next chapter of the story can't come soon enough. Boom. Hank, Hank time out. Yeah. Sti- kind of like what I said. Yeah, the stipulation is if Miz wins, Loomis is gone. If Loomis wins, he gets a WWE contract. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Oh, God. That sounds like, this, this sounds like a silly angle that AEW would be doing. You know? Um and it's a shame, bro, because this started. Like, like the guy doesn't work. Like, like, the, like we're going to believe the guy doesn't work for WWE. He has no contract. Come on, <laughs> right? But the, like, give me a. Fr- so that's so stupid. I hate stuff this, like that. This, it's so dumb. But this started off great, bro, and that's when you have when this is what happens when you try to milk stuff too much. Backstage, Shawn Michaels, X Pac, and Road Dog met up with a couple of the enhancement wrestlers to try to fire them up about their match with Omos. And after the enhancement wrestlers left, Miz showed up with his deflated complaint about Lubis. Michael said he knows Loomis. Why is a quiet guy? He's a good guy. And Miz must have done something to piss him off. Road Dog proposed Miz face Loomis next week with the stipulation that Loomis would be gone forever if he loses, but Miz would forfeit his deflated balls for you. So they, they, they make the stipulation here. Yeah, the, 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 they, they, you're right. The Degeneration X guys did. I didn't see this. This is not making it to Hulu. Um, and this doesn't make it to Hulu either. Omos versus Joseph Torres and Robert Adams. I'm going to repeat the wait, same wait, thing. Wait, wait, wait. I said Joseph Torres a who? and Robert Adams. Right, exactly. Who? Right. Uh, <laughs> 
Right. <laughs> Omos beats these guys at a minute 20 seconds. And after the match, MVP spoke to Omos, who then hit his tree slam finisher on both opponents before leaving the ring. Right. So first thing, if MVP's out there, why isn't he on commentary and why isn't he on the mic? You're underutilizing the guy. True. That's number one. Number two, bro, there's nothing that's exciting or fascinates me or wants to make me watch Omos beat up two guys that are half his size that you know are going to get jobbed out that you never heard of. And why is he still doing squash matches? You know, not a fan of almost or what they're doing with him right now. Um, so U.S. champion Bobby Lashley comes out. Oh, actually, they, they replayed the Wyatt. First of all, they did not. Bray Wyatt was not on the show. They just He's replayed on this. SmackDown, dude. Right. I thought, but I thought he would appear on this and set something up for SmackDown, but they just right. talked about him. So. Mm, me too. Um, yeah. So Lashley makes his entrance. He played the crowd and said he would be fighting champion for the fans. Said he's beaten Drew, Roman, and Brock, and Lashley called, recalled Rollins claiming he didn't get a fair shot. And Lashley called Rollins to come out and get his ass whooped. Uh, Brock Lesnar's entrance music played, and he made his entrance wearing his country attire and his ACDC t shirt. Graves said there was no fear in the eyes of Lashley, but there was confusion. And Lesnar took his usual rap around the ring and entered and played to the crowd. Well, holy, Lesnar started and was censored. Lesnar said good evening to Brooklyn, then to Lashley, who held up his belt, and Lesnar grabbed Ashley and put him down with a, a cup. He gave him a few F. Uh, because German suplexes and if like two or three F F fives, and um, they kind of left him laying. So and then the, he put so, the Kimura lock on him. Oh, put the Kimura lock on him, right? Yeah. And then he left to to some heat, right? right. He got a big pop coming out. And he had some heat when he left. So they they so Bobby's selling. The Rollins comes out. And he's got his he's bandaged up and everything, selling the effects of the fight pit. Uh, Rollins who had his ribs wrapped, barked at the referees to get him in the ring. Rollins got a mic and told Lashley he wasn't getting out of the title match that easy. And he called Lashley saying that he was a fighting champion. Lashley kept walking. Rollins said Lashley is supposed to be a soldier. And Lashley turned around and faced Rollins, who told him that he's a disgrace to his title and his country. That set Lashley off. And he walked toward the ring while holding his left arm at his side. Basically, uh, um, Lashley went for a spear, but Rollins hit him with the pedigree. And Rollins followed up with a top row splash and held his ribs after he, after he kicked out. He went for a stop, but he avoided it. Lashley speared Rollins. Both men stayed down and sold their injuries. But when they stood up, Lashley went for the hurt lock, but Rollins attacked his injured arm, hit a rolling elbow, a super kick, another rolling elbow, and Rollins kicked Lashley's bit off, bad arm, then hit him with two stomps and pinned him in two minutes and 30 seconds. Um, I predicted this, didn't I? Joe, I think you sent me the link where I said that uh, I actually said that Rollins, you know, all Rollins needs is to get his heat back. I said he'd probably get beat by Matt Riddle and get a win back the next night, which is exactly what happened here. Now he's U.S. champion. Right, so, right. you know, but this is how you book a heel. You know, I mean, because Roll- the thing with Rollins is, is he's getting cheered because, you know, it's like the, the, this is wrestling today. It's like because the crowd doesn't like boo the heels and cheer the baby faces a lot. Like they, like they will sometimes, but sometimes they'll cheer the heels. And we see it with, with MJF. We see it with Seth Rollins. We just see it with some, some of the heels. But the problem is, is that if you have a crowd participation type thing, like like the like Rollins is song that this is, the fans will sing along with, right? Like Jericho, the fans sing along with his song when he comes out. Because this this crowd is kind of like a participation type crowd where they go and they, you know, they have this is awesome chance. You 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 deserve like they have these set chants, so they'll participate in the crowd participation stuff. Like they'll sing along with any like whoever's song it is, heel or babyface, because that's like crowd participation. And you know, it doesn't help him being a heel, but as long as you keep booking him like a heel, he's gonna stay a heel, which is what they did here. You know, and I, I well, what do you think about that, Conan? Yeah, you know, well, but also one of the other reasons people like him is because he's charismatic. Right. And and he's a great worker. And you right. know how people like great work rate. But I thought this was when when they when Brock Lesnar's music came out, I actually popped. I was like, holy what a great surprise. And then I liked him F5-ing him out of nowhere. At first, I was like, why is he putting the Kimura lock on him and then just leaving him there? But then I understood so they could protect him and Rollins could beat him. Very well done. Right. So um, uh, so uh, Bad Blashley was backstage and he off with deal with Rollins. He challenged Lesnar to show up next week on Raw. And that beast ain't nothing but a little he said. Uh, they had a uh, Bray Wyatt video. Um, said "Revel on what you are" is how close out. So I don't know exactly how to describe this unless you see it. Uh, so Riddle makes his entrance. And it's Riddle versus Zayn. I don't. This is 16 minutes. So this is good. It's, both these guys, you know, none of these these guys have good matches every time. Not great, but they're just good. But basically, Sammy told Jay not to you know not to interfere. So Jay just did, didn't interfere. 
and Riddle beat him. So the storyline there going forward is going to be, you know, you know, Reigns told Jay he wanted to make sure that Sammy wins, but Jay listened to Sammy and said, I don't, you know, so it's like, it's going to be an interesting, uh, right. You know, right. So, so like, very well done. Right. Yeah. Right. Good storytelling. Great storytelling. Um, um, so then the, the show closed with the, with the DX guys coming out they did the, they did their shtick and their routine and you know, that, that, that was it. I mean, I don't, I don't want to describe this. They come out and did all their catchphrases and got a good pop, but that was the end of the show. It was just like an homage to, to DX. They didn't like nothing happened there. I didn't yeah, see I, the and, end. And I did like the fact that they came out in the tank in the little right. Jeep. Yeah. Yeah. They came out in a little Jeep. Right. I didn't see the end. I just want to ask, did they make any references to Billy not being there? Yeah. They did. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the people actually when he when Road Dog goes and it's a, and then he's the, the, the Road Dog Jesse Jay Z held the microphone up and the crowd said the the badass Billy Gunn wow and said, the new eight right so it's like yeah well, so he's him. over yeah. on he was over on both shows this week yeah yeah it was uh, but anyways um, and you know they didn't try to act like cool teenagers they just kind of like acted their age and you know I expected a little bit more but it was a good nostalgic finish good right. show. That, yeah. I, I thought it was a good show, except for the women's match, yeah. the Candice LeRae match. I didn't like, and I didn't like the Holmes thing. And the, and the than, Loomis stuff is dragging too. And so. the Loomis thing is dragging, yeah. Right. But other than that, it was a good show. 